Ladies and gentlemen, I protect the people, the planet, and the animals. And, as I've seen it, since about September of 2019, the time that I've been telling you that I was 99% sure the markets were going to crash in 2020, politicians and central banks and treasuries have been doing what they can to keep banks and corporations afloat. And not only float, but stock prices high. So we've been watching that go on for almost six months now. And so with eight weeks or more to prepare for this pandemic sweeping across the United States of America, inevitably in the middle of March, I've just declared a shutdown for my city and politicians have pretty much done nothing to help the people that whole time. And so today the narrative has changed to that of the economy is being hurt. And so we're going to try and put the people back to work in the United States of America as soon as possible. And so as the United States becomes third in cases and infections, and the numbers are really starting to ramp up exponentially, and after the Federal Reserve has done what, like six, seven interest rate cuts to zero, and like seven or eight different repo, treasury buying, mortgage-backed security buying, like permanent liquid backstops. Apparently, the politicians are having a hard time deciding on a bill that partially includes the people. So you've got New York in stay-at-home mode, California in stay-at-home mode, a lot of countries in stay-at-home mode, like 1.2 billion people across the planet in stay-at-home mode. And at a time where all politicians have talked about a cash infusion of anywhere to 1000 to 2000 a month for people to make it through this big six-week battle to defeat the virus and figure out what's going on and stay home because it acts like a slow, impacting hurricane that in bullet time acts like chain lightning. It can go from one person to like 20, like the bad guy in Star Wars. And so... Because everybody's going to be staying home, the people are going to need to be fed and have enough money to feed themselves. And ha uh, over half the population has less than like one month worth of savings. And so we're going to have to keep supply chains up and do everything we can to support hospitals as we could see up to a million people die from this in the next six months, if not more, if we do not contain it. And so... Now that they've done everything they can for the banks and the markets, politicians are having a hard time coming up with a bill that will, A, keep people fed, keep keep lights on for everybody, keep everybody in their houses, and make sure that the people who are on the front lines are properly rewarded. Like, if you are working in a grocery store right now, you shouldn't have to pay your cable bill. You shouldn't have to pay your, like, electric bill, especially with doctors, nurses. Like, we need to be doing what we can to reward the people who are helping keep it together, in my opinion. And so, apparently, they're fighting over a bunch of stuff, Republicans and Democrats, as far as the bill that includes something for the people. And I want to remind everybody, the truth of the matter is, they can do an individual bill that takes care of the people. I'd recommend anywhere from $1,000, $2,000 per household um, to make sure you can pay all your basic bills, you keep your lights on, your cell phones on, and internet on, and you stay fed. Um, and we think this can be a two to three month battle. So somehow figuring out how to do that, support the people that are going to keep the food supply chains, the ones that are working, that continue to work, make sure they're massively rewarded. I would even suggest possibly like having credits to hand out cars to people that are going to be on the front lines. At the end of the day, they get some major awards for being the ones that kept it together. But that is when we're talking about representing the people. And they don't have to have, like, take care of the people, $1,000, $2,000 a month, play good defense. Be part of some giant burrito bill for bailouts for corporations and other programs and tax cuts and whatever things they got to do. They can do a bunch of bills, man. So they can't say that whatever they want to do just for the people is being held up by other stipulations. Because they can single out that people have now been out of work for one to three weeks. And the next, the DOD army 
briefing, the guy said they expect this to peak at worst point in the middle of April. So we've got three to four weeks left where everyone needs to be staying home playing defense. We've got our president saying, hey, we're, we might try to open up an American in two weeks, like at the peak of when it would be bet worst, which is crazy. And then now the UK government, which technically I'd considered one of the only worst countries than I, ours in dealing with this, has asked people to stay home after like two weeks ago. They were talking about, let's try herd immunity. See how that goes. Well, they changed their tune real quick. And so there's a big political tone of like to save the old, old, old economy we got to sacrifice a million, two million, three million, four million people. And the story has been that it only affects people over 65. This dude here who died of the coronavirus was 30. This dude here who just died of the coronavirus is 34. I remember, we just found out like a month ago when all the politicians got informed that this was going to be really bad in the middle of March. Instead of choosing to tell us that and prepare us for that, they sold their stocks. Well, assuring us status quo would stay up and the stocks would just get higher. And so like five days ago, when everybody understood that everybody's going to need to be fed, pay their bills while we play defense and hunker down as this thing chain lightnings out and we see numbers go up exponentially over the next two weeks, no matter what, like to shut it all down, it takes like a, 10 days to two weeks, if not more, to figure out how and where to contain it. And so, you know, they had said a few days ago, like, oh, we'll have it figured out in three weeks, like the week after rent, people's rent will be due. And so it is, uh, I mean, we have to somehow magically, whether it be through prayer or phone calls or letters or what other magic ways we have to convince our politicians that now that they spend the last month taking care of the banks and the corporations, they need to take care of the people, which includes the military who will be helping the healthcare industries and the people in the factories who will be making our food and delivering it to us and making sure it gets on the shelves. And that those groups need everyone's full support. And then, you know, people have to stay home. Like we're literally figuring out what to do with this virus that showed up out of nowhere and hates human beings. It attacks your lungs and turns your mucus into something you can't breathe through. So you die of suffocation in a worst case scenario. It attacks your livers, your spleen, and it, and it leaves anywhere from 15 to 18% of everyone infected in the infirmary with a tube to your throat so you can breathe. And so we are definitely at event horizon. And if you've been paying attention to the whole government shit show for at least the last six months, they're like doing everything they can to distract us. And if we don't take care of the people while asking them to stay home, when people get hungry, they get real hungry, they do crazy things. And so we want to avoid lawlessness, looting, riots, and shit like that. And the best way to do that is do the right thing. And so, like, I don't even know if they were going to send out like $1,000, $2,000 to everybody a month like how they would do it, you know, even if they agreed with a number, like what process would you do to make sure everyone with a social security number that was alive got a payment to stay cool and play defense for the next month or two? Because this thing is bad, and I have this weird feeling that it showed up somewhere in September, and it has been growing and mutating and getting stronger. And that's really what we're dealing with. But who knows, man? I'm just one man, and I'm saying this is bad, and it's going to keep getting worse. New York is getting totally rocked. New Jersey's getting hit pretty hard, as are Washington and California. And this thing is starting to spread. And you're not shutting down the economy. You're just adapting it to the needs of human beings. Is soil and green people, and people are prophets? The consumer, the consumed to a new higher level, that is some disgusting shit, man. And um, I just don't know. It just seems like a bad road to go down. And so it is time to hit the button and do the right thing and stay cool. That I would play defense 
and then we all figured out how to adapt the system together when we get out of this mess in this war with this thing that hates human beings instead of jockeying for power in a power vacuum situation that is ongoing in a live action crisis okay so yeah things are crazy Wuhan's talking about opening up it in two more weeks which would be like a 10 week period and so I recommend everybody work together and the people who are trying to distract the public stop doing that shit because no matter what unless a major massive planetary miracle happens no the grim reaper is going to be rolling through the united states and many places in the world over the next two weeks for sure this is like slow thanos until we come together and use all of our resources to defeat it and then build a better system so this is your update these are crazy days indeed and i have faith in god and i've told you my big concern is that politicians they're the only ones who can put in a good plan in place right now so that everyone can adapt to it in our fiat currency trade system and so everybody pray and do what you can to make sure good decisions are made every planetary defense commander i'll do what i can these are crazy days my friend all right stay cool god bless everyone